medical breakthroughs. Gene therapy grows new skin for dying boy. A young patient who lost most of his skin to a genetic disease now has a new chance at life, thanks to a breakthrough therapy that gave him replacement skin. The seven-year-old boy was born with junctional epidermal lysis bullosa, a condition in which a gene defect causes the skin to become fragile, often tearing and forming blisters. By June 2015, the boy had gotten two bacterial infections that destroyed two-thirds of his skin. He was treated with antibiotics, bandages, and even a skin graft from his father, but nothing worked. Doctors decided to use gene therapy on a patch of non-blistered skin and used a virus to carry a corrected version of the defective gene into the skin cells. The engineered cells were grown into sheets of skin and grafted onto the child's body to replace his missing skin. The grafts took and grew, and the patient was discharged by February 2016. His epidermis is currently stable and doesn't blister or itch. Breakthrough Nanochip heals injuries with just one touch. Researchers at Ohio State University have developed a new technology that allows the body to generate any type of cell to help heal injuries. Tissue nanotransfection involves placing a fingernail-sized nanochip on a patient's skin, adding a droplet of genetic material, and zapping it with an electrical current. The DNA is delivered through channels created by the current, and it reprograms skin cells to turn into specific cell types that can then be used in other parts of the body. When tested on a mouse with a damaged leg, researchers found vascular cells converted from skin cells formed new blood vessels that allowed the leg to heal in two weeks. The non-invasive technology was also able to generate nerve cells in the legs of brain-damaged mice. Once the cells were harvested, they were injected into the brain to help with stroke recovery. The nanochip also tested effectively in pigs and is expected to be approved for human trials within a year. Head transplant could be possible within two years. An Italian surgeon believes that a human head transplant could take place within just two years and help extend the lives of people who are suffering from muscle and nerve degeneration as well as those with advanced stages of cancer. The head transplant procedure proposed by surgeon Sergio Cannavaro begins with doctors cooling the patient's head in the donor's body so their cells do not die during the operation. After the neck is cut through, major blood vessels are linked up using thin tubes and the spinal cord is cut cleanly to minimize nerve damage. The head is then moved onto the donor's body and the spinal cords can be fused together using polyethylene glycol to encourage the fat in cell membranes to mesh. Once the neck is sutured, the recipient will be kept in a coma for three to four weeks, while implanted electrodes provide regular electrical stimulation to the spinal cord. Finally, when the patient wakes up from the coma, they'll be able to feel their face and speak, but will need a year of physiotherapy before regaining the ability to walk. The procedure is mostly theoretical. However, many neuroscientists are wary of the idea, calling it too outlandish to be taken seriously. Paralyzed man walks again after receiving cell transplant. A paralyzed 38-year-old man has regained the ability to walk after undergoing a breakthrough procedure that repaired his injured spinal cord. The pioneering spinal cord repair procedure was performed in Poland in collaboration with researchers in London on a patient paralyzed from the waist down following a knife attack in 2010. For the procedure, olfactory and sheathing cells were taken from one of the patient's olfactory bulbs in his nose, along with strips of nerve tissue from his ankle. The cells, known as OECs, were cultured and injected around the damaged site on the spinal cord. The nerve tissue is grafted across the gap on the spinal cord. The researchers believe that the injected cells stimulated the inert spinal cord cells to regenerate, using the grafted nerve strips as a bridge to fill the gap in the spinal cord. The patient can now walk with the frame. With sufficient funding, three more paralyzed patients are expected to be treated in Poland within the next three to five years. Gray hair and baldness may soon be a thing of the past. Scientists researching tumors may have accidentally found the cure for gray hair and baldness. Two proteins, KROX20 and stem cell factor, are responsible for hair loss and pigmentation in hair, respectively. Hair shafts turn white when stem cell factor is depleted from hair cells. 
Meanwhile, hair loss is observed when KROX20 is removed from hair cells. Researchers will continue to study whether the two proteins stop working as people get older, which also could help explain why people age in general. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals. New science breakthrough could allow humans to be grown in labs. UK scientists have successfully grown a mouse embryo in a lab, which indicates this method could be eventually applied to growing artificial human embryos. To grow a mouse embryo, researchers extracted the rodent's embryonic stem cells and extra embryonic trophoblast stem cells. These are the cells that form the placenta. The two types of cells are mixed, placed on a 3D scaffold, then grown in a tank of chemicals that mimics the conditions inside the womb. The cells grew to form a structure that very closely resembled a natural mouse's embryo after 96 hours. The Francis Crick Institute in London was granted permission to genetically modify human embryos last year. This is the first time such a procedure has been approved by regulators anywhere in the world. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied, and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Scientists are calling this a medical breakthrough. A drug typically used to treat arthritis and fever can cut the risk of heart attacks. According to U.S. government information, heart disease accounts for one in four American deaths each year. New research suggests that the anti-inflammatory drug canakinumab can reduce the risk of a repeat heart attack by 15%. The research tracked 10,000 heart attack patients in 40 countries who were treated with the drug every three months over a period of four years. Canakinumab were shown to be more effective than statin, another drug heart disease patients usually take to lower cholesterol. The researchers also found some in the study, most notably the elderly and diabetics, contracted potentially fatal infections and sepsis. Experts say the drug could save lives, but some are wary of the side effects. Molecule from tree found to be able to treat iron deficiency. Researchers have discovered that the molecule henokitiol restores iron transport in cells with missing or defective iron transporter proteins, dubbing it molecular prosthetics. In healthy cells, transport proteins move iron across the cell membrane, where it's needed to make hemoglobin that carries oxygen to the body. If the transporter is missing or defective, iron cannot cross through the cell membrane. The lack of iron reduces hemoglobin production and the body's red blood cell count. 
This decreases the body's oxygen levels and causes the heart to pump faster. A trio of henokidial molecules has been found to restore the transporter function. The polar ends bind to iron, while the nonpolar ends create a shield, allowing it to cross into the cell membrane. With cells now receiving iron, hemoglobin production and red blood cell count are both restored to normal levels. Henokidial has been tested on animals, where it's been shown to promote iron uptake in the guts of mice and prompt hemoglobin production in zebrafish. In future studies, researchers hope to develop similar drugs to treat transporter protein-related diseases, such as cystic fibrosis and lupus. Can this helmet help cure depression? This helmet could be used to help treat depression. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have developed a helmet that has the potential to relieve symptoms of depression. During clinical trials, half of the volunteers wore the helmet at home for 30 minutes a day. Consisting of seven coils, the helmet emits electromagnetic pulses to brain tissue. The pulses mimic the brain's natural electrical fields. These electrical fields spur the growth of blood vessels and the release of growth hormones by stimulating the cerebral capillaries. The majority of subjects reported improved moods. The subjects continue to take their antidepressants during the trial. Scientists say that the device has a different theoretical basis from the controversial electroconvulsive therapy. Better Alzheimer's treatment soon. Alzheimer's is a crippling disease that currently has no cure, but a British neuroscientist is hoping that breakthroughs in research could lead to better treatment in just 10 years. According to a neuroscientist, Joseph Jabelli, memory loss comes with age, but forgetting what certain everyday things are could signal a more serious problem. Healthy brains shrink by about 10% between the ages 50 and 80. Brain cells shrivel up slightly, reducing contact between each cell and causing them to function more slowly. In patients with Alzheimer's, toxic proteins cause a buildup of plaques and tangles in the brain, which causes cell death. Current medication only treats the symptoms and can delay them for six months to a year. Researchers have been looking into ways of using sleep to treat the disease, since the brain uses cerebrospinal fluid to clean away the plaques and tangles during sleep. Scientists are also considering neural stem cells as a treatment for Alzheimer's, believing that the cells can be activated to generate new neurons, allowing the brain to heal itself. Jabelli believes the future of Alzheimer's treatment lies not in an outright cure, but in being able to manage and control the disease enough to keep its symptoms at bay. Fetal pacemaker ready for human trials. Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA.